stations on Dune Accord. We have the tone for burn cutoff on Delta B. Welcome to Jupiter. The scale of the mission is hard to overstate. It's really the result of countless hours of planning and preparation by a very smart, very dedicated team and their Herculean effort. One of the members of that team is with me now, Fran Bagnall, who's a planetary scientist, an astrophysical and planetary scientist who's worked with the team and will throughout. And she's with me this morning. And Fran, I'm so happy to meet you. Congratulations, number one. It's great news. <laughs> We're in orbit. I, I bet. Thumbs up all around. We're going to play this, the scenes again from this morning. I love that. Just the three words that are now infamous. Welcome to Jupiter. I know there was the main control room and you were in a room just offside. But tell me about the moment when uh, you found out that Juno had succeeded. Huge relief. Huge relief. Uh, a very dangerous journey to get there. And uh, we survived. And all looking good. And we'll come back and go and do another 35 orbits. And take a lot of fantastic data so it's going to be great fun okay. but big relief to get through that first really dangerous first flyby big really we'll come back to what you're going to look at from now but the big relief part i mean to us non-scientists it looked like everything unfolded flawlessly did it to you who know or were there moments of anxiety there at all no it was flawless but we didn't know going in um, there's a lot of potential hazard that we were not, we were very concerned about, the radiation belts. We didn't know what they were really going to be like. We weren't sure whether or not there would be debris at the equator and sort of like a ring, leftover pieces uh, of a ring, something like that. And so you never know until you come out of that uh, orbit insertion maneuver whether or not everything's good. And, and it did. It was flawless, absolutely perfect. I mean, it was precise. Share with our audience just how precise it was, how much you missed in terms of time by the actual moment of arrival from what you had planned five years ago. It was one second off. I mean, it was incredibly close. So I mean, that it, is it, astounding. Perfect. One second. Yes, absolutely perfect. So, you know, everything was timed and planned and worked according to plan, which is great. But the problem is it, that sounds like, oh, well, what's the big deal? But it was a, going in, we really didn't know that environment and we really didn't know what we would find. And uh, so it's a huge relief to it, that it worked so well. And now you get to find all sorts of things. You used a word that Scott Bolton, who's the principal investigator, also used uh, when, when you got there. He said, now the fun begins. So yes. what is the fun going to involve? What are you going to be doing over these next 18 months? So we're going to fly past Jupiter, you know, 35 times or so. And each time we're going to be mapping out the gravity field, mapping out the magnetic field, measuring the amount of uh, heat coming from the inside, measuring the amount of water in the atmosphere, all sorts of things like that that we're going to be measuring. And uh, that's going to be really fantastic. So as you measure, what then will you learn? What are you most excited about as a scientist involved in this project to learn from what Juno sends back? We're interested in what it's like inside Jupiter. We want to know the amount of water inside. We want to know what Jupiter's made of. And that will tell us uh, the origin of Jupiter. And that is very important for understanding the origin of our solar system and indeed the origin of Earth. I am most interested in knowing about the great red dot. Are you going to be looking at that? We will indeed be looking at the great red spot, a variety of different ways. You know, uh, local astronomers have been finding out that uh, it's getting smaller, which is bizarre. After looking at it for 400 years, we're now going to see that it's a little bit smaller. So when you talked about the radiation, and we've been mentioning on this program just how intense it is, I think the figure would be under the, like, 100 million dental x-rays, is that would be what it would be having to withstand, withstand this incredible radiation effect on, on Juno, right? Yes. Uh, surrounding Jupiter, there's a, a donut of uh, radiation that is really intense, and we uh, are going to have to fly sort of through the edges of that. We're trying to avoid it as much as possible. But eventually, the spacecraft will go through it. And we fear that is what will eventually 
uh, damage the spacecraft and we'll have to, uh, that'll end the mission eventually. Yeah. Eventually, but hopefully not until long after we've learned all the things that you want to learn. But because of that radiation, all the sensitive equipment components, they are all in the vault. We've been talking about that this morning. And if my reading is correct, you actually turned off the cameras during the entry uh, to make sure again that those sorts of critical components were protected during this last phase of locking in orbit. So we haven't seen any actual pictures or images of the moment where it entered Jupiter's orbit. Do we expect to see those at some point? Um, no, we, we turned off all the instruments. Okay. This is Done. such a critical moment that we had to turn off the science instruments. We will come back in 53 days and we'll start making fantastic measurements then. And then we'll know um, we'll be getting the data then. Okay. Stand by for pictures in August. Can I just ask you personally, as I say goodbye to you, I mean, this must be the pinnacle of a scientific career. What is it like to be part of the team and to be going to be studying this over the, the weeks and months to come, a, a part of space we've never visited before, and to be part of uh, what we're going to learn? It's so exciting. It's fantastic indeed. Culmination of a lot of work in space. We're going to start getting the, the data we really want now. Well, I hope I speak to you again, Fran, as we start to learn some of these really interesting things. Thank you so much for your time indeed. this morning. And again, Great. congratulations on taking us there. Thank you very much. Fran Bagnall, as she joins me this morning, one of the Juno team going to be watching this very exciting development over the months to come. Now, you can have your own encounter with Jupiter. How about that? All you have to do is step outside around the time the sun is going down. Jupiter is one of the brightest objects in the night sky this month, so you look to the west. There you get an indication of it. A little later on this week, you'll be able to see Jupiter near the crescent moon. Planets appear as steady points of light. They don't twinkle like stars. That's how you can tell them apart. And you can actually see Jupiter with the naked eye or try binoculars. Sky watchers say any pair of seven power binoculars will give you a closer look both at Jupiter and its moons.